All right. Hey guys, how's everyone doing out there today? Everyone all right? How many people do we have out there today? There's seven. I right see now. seven. I'm just trying to figure out how to show them. <laughs> <laughs> we're just doing working on some technical stuff. As you can tell, I got some lights today. Last week was really dark. I don't know why we got a new computer. <clears throat> so I think our camera was kind of dark. So we brought in some new lighting. <clears throat> I met you to help you guys see the stuff that we're going to look at today because today is going to be really cool. You guys, I know that everyone loves the topic of sharks and sharks are incredible, incredible animals and they go back so very far. So let's start by getting our fossil boxes out. We're going to go to, what are we, is this Expedition 8? Expedition 8, I think it is. And you guys have a bag with a bunch of shark's teeth in it. So go ahead and pull those out. Some of you might have some little bits and pieces of fish bones in there, but they're these little teeth, these kind of orange colored teeth. You guys will have a little handful of them in there. <clears throat> and just let you know about these teeth. These are real shark's teeth. These teeth are about 50 million years old, these teeth you have. I know they kind of look like, oh, I just found them on the beach. These were dug up <clears throat> in Northern Africa in the country of Morocco, believe it or not, an area that's now massive sand dunes like the Sahara Desert, but at the time when these guys were alive was an ocean. So they find lots of these teeth. So these teeth are about 35 to 50 million years old and they are real fossilized shark's teeth from various different kinds of sharks. The long thin ones, these long skinny ones are kind of from, from a relative of the sand tiger shark that you see it lives nowadays. Real kind of snaggle tooth with lots and lots of long skinny kind of bent teeth. And you'll see some of these other ones which are more triangular, short, fat, more triangular teeth. And these are from a shark called an Ototus. And this is kind of cool. Ototus is the same family that eventually evolved Megalodon, which we're gonna talk about as well. So the short, fatter, more triangular teeth, they're from cousins of Megalodon. But those are real teeth, 35 to 50 million years old from Northern Africa in the Morocco region of Northern Africa when it used to be an ocean. All right, sharks, what do we know about them? We know they're still around, right? <clears throat> we know they've actually swum the oceans of the world for over 400 million years, yikes. That is a mind-bogglingly huge number, 400 million years. Now, to put that in perspective, the dinosaurs lived on planet Earth from the time they first arrived to the time the asteroid knocked them out. The dinosaurs were on Earth for about 170 million years. And then they died out about 65 million years ago, right? Sharks have swum the oceans for a hundred and what is it about 120 million years before the very first dinosaur ever set foot on planet earth there was sharks swimming the oceans of the world so they are truly amazing creatures and truly at earth's basically the beginning almost the beginning if we look at sharks i got a few pictures back here sharks come in all shapes and sizes now going into prehistoric times we're going to take a look at some really weird sharks but overall, the look of a shark has not changed in all that time, mainly because Mother Nature designed a shark and it looks kind of like a missile, right? Kind of like a, like a, a torpedo. It's shaped perfect, like a, just like a kind of like a dolphin or, or fish. That overall shape, that marine, or sorry, that streamlined shape, they can cut through the water so quickly, so easily. Their fins, everything about them are perfect for where they live. They've survived incredible destruction on Earth. The they, just, they survived the asteroid strike when the dinosaurs died out. Sharks were still here. They could live deep in the water. They didn't have to come to the surface. They had gills for breathing underwater. Their design has been absolutely mwah, perfect. If perfect in nature, That's, which is why they've been around for so long. Now, not all of them have been perfect. If we look at a couple of these weird sharks, the buzzsaw shark for starters, I'm gonna show you guys a few prehistoric sharks that just kind of didn't make the cut. For whatever reason, they kind of went away. If I can get this to work here, there we go. So they kind of went away, they just, uh, their design, here's the buzzsaw shark right here. Look at his mouth. Can you guys see that if I hold it up? If you look at his mouth, it's like a pinwheel. It's a very, very weird, weird jaw shape. It is literally, it's not a whole jaw, 
like we have or like a dinosaur has. It's a single blade pinwheel. And these guys, here's another look at one. <laughs> these are artist renditions of what they might have looked like by the fossil remains of the jaws. But they're just very strange sharks. And there was quite a few of them. I have a, a few pictures here to show you guys because they're really neat. There, here's here's a, a, a paleo sculptor's model of what it might have looked like in real life. It's got the colors on it and stuff, but it's got that pinwheel jaw right there. Now these guys, for whatever reason, Mother Nature designed them and they just kind of didn't work real well. And that's probably one of the reasons they went extinct. They just didn't adapt. For whatever reason, maybe the jaw wasn't that great for trying to hunt food and they had a difficult time. And eventually that caught up with them. Other sharks, this guy, the hammerfin sharks, these guys are so weird too. You look at those, you're like, well, how could something like that swim through the water with these weird appendages on them like that? Somehow they probably lasted a little while. They probably lasted a few million years, which is still a super long time. Cause you gotta remember human beings like us, people that are recognizable. I'm not, I'm not talking about ancient monkeys and stuff like that. I'm talking about someone, if you were to look at a human being and say, I recognize you as a human being, you need to take a shower, but I recognize you as a human being. We only go back about 200,000 years. That's like the blink of an eye in geologic time. Even some of these designs of sharks that just simply did not work well, they probably were still around for a few millions of years before they finally took off because they just simply didn't work. There's another look at the, bu the buzzsaw shark. He would basically swim through the water with that blade and hopefully get stuff snagged on it. And then he would swallow things really is what he would do. Now sharks have adapted all over. There's probably almost close to a thousand sharks, different kinds of sharks in the oceans of the world today. Um, most of them are small, M much like dinosaurs. Most sharks and just like most dinosaurs are not that big. We just always remember the super big, super weird ones, the, the ones that, that stick in our mind the most, like great white sharks and hammerhead sharks, whale sharks and tiger sharks, things like that. But most sharks are pretty small. In fact, some of them were probably only the width of my finger, full grown. There's lots of them that swim around the oceans that are just very small. They live in little cracks and crevices in the reefs and bottoms of the ocean. Some of them live really, really deep and don't really have any eyesight because they're so deep. So sharks are from all over all over. Now, one of the most recognizable ones that you guys all know in the prehistoric world would be Megalodon, right? Megalodon was, I mean, arguably the biggest and baddest. There's Megalodon right there. Megalodon was so big, it hunted whales. Think about that for a second. How big do you have to be to hunt a whale? And that's what he ate most of the time was whales. He probably ate whatever he wanted to, he could, eat, he could eat big turtles. He could eat archelon. Actually, archelon was long gone, but there were other big turtles. There's a megalodon going after a giant turtle, right? And some people say, well, I mean, how big was he? We know he was big because we find his teeth, right? You guys have seen the teeth and I've showed them to you before. And I, I have a few here I'm going to show you um, to get a good comparison. Here's a Tyrannosaurus Rex tooth right there. There's a T-Rex tooth. This is the part that will be sticking out of the gums, just like in you guys, your teeth that are sticking out of your gums. That's that piece right there. Now, if we start with the smallest ones and move our way up, there's a, megalodon, a young megalodon tooth right there. Maybe that was back by the jaw, by the hinge, so he could open and close his mouth easy. Because if all the teeth were giant, he couldn't open and close his mouth. But they get a little bit bigger, right? They get a little bit bigger. Here's another one right here. Pretty cool. Megalodon was enormous. They get bigger than that. Here's a bigger one right here. You can see that has that glassy, that's the enamel. That's the shiny part of the tooth that is fossilized and it's almost like a chunk of glass. This particular tooth still has really sharp serrations on it. I could actually cut a steak or cut a sandwich with this. It's still sharp enough to do that today, but they get bigger than that. Here's, the, here's another giant one right here. Look at the size of that one. If we turn it around, Megalodon, Megalodon was just unreally huge. You could drive a car into Megalodon's mouth and he was massive. He ate a ton of food, literally practically every day he would have to eat a lot of food. Now here's something cool. Here's the biggest Megalodon tooth ever found. So there's the T-Rex tooth. Look at the size of that tooth. That is like almost unimaginable, something to have a tooth that big, let alone a whole mouthful of teeth that big. Look how thick that thing is right there. 
Megalodon lived about 50 million years after T. rex lived. They didn't live at the same time. There were lots of large sharks that lived during the dinosaur times. Absolutely. Without a doubt there was. But to give you a better understanding right here of how big uh, Megalodon was compared to Tyrannosaurus rex, here's a good comparison right here. If you could go back and get a time machine, grab a T. rex, go forward in time 50 million years, drop it in the ocean in front of Megalodon, Megalodon could eat Tyrannosaurus rex in about five bites. So remember, Tyrannosaurus rex was 40 feet long, 20,000 pounds. Megalodon's around 60 to 70 feet long and weighed about 80 to 90,000 pounds. An absolutely massive, massive animal that could eat Tyrannosaurus rex pretty quickly. Now there were some other strange sharks in this area, right around where we are. There was one called a Phycotus shark. And you were used to seeing these triangular, typical shark triangle teeth for cutting into fish and cutting into meat. But here's the tooth of a Phycotus shark. And you can see how different it is. It's like a little hammer. It's rounded. It's like a little knob or a hammer. And this guy was used for basically crushing shells. You guys know what ammonites are, right? Ammonites, the curly shell with the squid living in it. These guys would just crush them, crush that shell, and then they could swallow all the gooey insides, kind of like a candy bar, right? But that's what this guy was. And he was kind of a normal looking shark. Honestly, when you look at him, he doesn't look that bizarre. He just had very strange teeth is what it was. But we also find, as always, and one of my favorite things to find is fossils that kind of tell us a little bit of a story. Because I think that's the coolest thing. If you find a dinosaur bone that has an injury on it, a tooth mark, we know that that dinosaur got attacked or got eaten. And it gives you a little bit of a window of a story into an animal that lives so far away. But every now and again, we find something like this. That's kind of a typical white shark. That's from a shark called a, a squally corax. And it was an ancient shark. It lived in the oceans right here in Colorado when the ocean was here. And it was kind of a typical, it was kind of like a, like a little bit of a tiger shark, but smaller, right? They got pretty big, but this one was kind of small here. And the reason this shark, and this is kind of funny, the reason this shark tooth is white, the reason it's not, you know, like a, a dark fossil color or black like this phycotus tooth, this was found in the exact same layers as this phycotus tooth, but the phycotus tooth is, is fossilized black. Well, the reason this one is not is kind of funny. We call this a pooper fossil. <laughs> and what happened was this shark was eaten by a large predator. The whole shark was eaten and his teeth and his whole body went through the digestive system of a large predator. Maybe it was a bigger shark. Maybe it was a mosasaur. Who knows? Maybe it was a big archelon and it was able to eat this shark. But anyway, this tooth got digested in his tummy. And those strong stomach acids we have in our stomachs to help break down food and break things down, it eroded all that enamel off of the tooth. So it ended up fossilizing as a white, kind of a white chunky piece of bone and not a black enamel fossilized tooth, which is kind of funny. So you find that and you go, well, that's definitely a shark's tooth. Look at, the, look at the shape of it. That's definitely a shark's tooth. It's sitting right next to a little oyster shell too. But that fossil was digested in a huge predator before it sank down in the mud and got fossilized. That's pretty cool. But sometimes with sharks, we don't just find teeth because back, 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 way back in time, even some modern sharks, they have spines on their fins. And you guys like to fish out there? I like to go fishing. You guys like to go fishing out there? Sometimes when you catch a fish and you go to take it off the hook, it wiggles and, those, and the spines and, and the fins like poke your fingers and you're like, ooh, that hurt. Well, sharks had similar. These little like things and those little long bluish gray um, uh, pieces in there, those are fin uh, spines, fin spines from an ancient shark that lived right here in Colorado millions of years ago. This is found in the same layers as those other two teeth. Um, so that was identified as fins. That's pretty cool. Spines from, from fins right there. But the sharks have been around a long 400 million years. And some of the ones that are around today that we know so well are, are gargantuan. And I mentioned some of the ones that are smaller, but we do have a lot around here still that are really memorable sharks. And if we look at a few, you guys know real well. Oh, by the way, here's a couple of pictures. I forgot to show you, speaking about Megalodon, to give you an idea how big Megalodon's jaws were. That's a full grown lady staying, standing inside a model of Megalodon's jaws right there. And this is one of the most famous pictures going back to kind of the early days of science. 
is a bunch of scientists standing inside a huge set of jaws right there. So Megalodon was an amazing, amazingly massive creature. But we have today, nowadays, we know this guy, right? We all know that, the great white shark. Great white sharks are fairly common throughout the oceans of the world and getting more and more, uh, 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 numbers are growing more and more because they've been a protected species for so long now. For about the past, the past 30 years, great whites have been really protected by environmental groups. So now their numbers are growing and growing because they haven't been hunted for so long. So we're starting to see great whites appear in all kinds of places they didn't normally live around the coast of Maine, off the coast of Florida, places where they don't normally were, haven't been seen for a long, long time. They're starting to show up. Of course, the whale shark. This is kind of a small one, but that's a whale shark, a diver swimming next to a whale shark. Whale sharks are the biggest so far. So they kind of took the place of Megalodon, but they don't eat like Megalodon eat. They have very tiny mouths, they eat little plankton. So the whale shark today is the largest fish in the world. It happens to be a shark because sharks are fishes, right? Sharks are a type of fish. They're not mammals or nothing. They're not reptiles. They're a type of fish. So the whale shark to date right now is the largest fish in the world. And it happens to be a shark. So it's the largest shark. There's another shark that sometimes gets confused in science. This is kind of a weird picture of it, but this is a basking shark. Basking sharks have huge mouths, but they have incredibly tiny teeth, just like a whale shark, and they eat plankton and krill. They eat very, very tiny microscopic things. They swim through the water with this massive mouth open and they filter water. Just like a coffee filter, coffee filters coffee grounds to make coffee. This would go through and it would filter out all the food. But these guys are gigantic. And if you look kind of further back on him, he has more of a typical shark body with that big fin ticket sticking up off the top. So I think the basking shark is one of those creatures that people will see, especially if they're out on a boat, for example, because these guys are about 40 feet long. They're gigantic. They're bigger than any great white. They're about the same size as whale sharks. They just look more like a typical shark, especially their faces. So this is one of those ones you'll hear people say or see a picture and go, Megalodon's still alive. It was giant. That's usually a basking shark. And the, the coolest thing about these guys you could jump in the water right next to them and they wouldn't even bother you. They would just swim right by because they don't eat us. They eat tiny things. And it's like a massive shark that you could get close to and he would just swim on by. But they're in the oceans of the world all over, mostly cold water, but they're around today. Sharks will probably outlive all people. They'll probably outlive most things. They've done it for 400 million years and they will keep doing it without any doubt. They'll keep going on and on and on. They're one of the most perfect animals ever evolved from nature and they'll continue to do what they're gonna do. So I think it's time to take some questions. I see Sophie's got her hand up. We got a few hands up there. Okay. So let's just see, hold on one second and we will uh, get you guys figured out here. We'll get our, our muting done here. Uh, all right, Sophie, go ahead. All right, Sophie, what do you got? Um, if T-Rex had a six person car, could he drive it into Megalodon's mouth? If T-Rex had a six person car, could he drive it into Megalodon's mouth? That might be a little bit big. Megalodon might bite off the front end of his car, but I don't think he'd drive the whole car into his mouth. But that's a really imaginative question. I like that. <laughs> All right, who's got the next question um, out there? Kurt. Kurt's got a question. All right, let's get you unmuted there, Kurt. Hold on one second. There we go. What's your question? Um, I was wondering if I missed the last... Uh, Video. Last week's show? Yeah. And I was wondering if you record it. We do. It's on YouTube. We'll, we'll, we'll um, get up. You get on YouTube. Fossil Posse has a channel. And you're all on there. You can find them all on there. If you can't find it, then you email us here, okay, at fossilposse at gmail.com, and I'll send you the link. But you should be able to find it on YouTube. We have a channel, and they're all listed right there, and they should be right up to date. How's that sound? <laughs> Perfect. And we'll do this one as well. All right. Gabe said, Megalodon must have took a long time to brush his teeth. <laughs> Good one, Gabe. Gabe said, Megalodon must have taken a long time to brush his teeth. That's a funny thing you say. Now, animals that lived in the water, sharks, crocodiles, things like that, their mouths probably were fairly clean because they were always in water, and water was always washing over their mouths. But do you ever think about something like T-Rex? Sylvie just mentioned T-Rex. Think about T-Rex. All it ate was, was raw meat or dead rotting meat. 
It never brushed its teeth. I think that a lot of dinosaurs' breath and teeth would have been really, really gross, maybe even septic. Septic means that their mouths and their spit might have been actually poisonous because there was so many germs in it, similar to a modern Komodo dragon, which they're still not sure how poison it, it, how, po how effective their poison is. They think it just has a very, very filthy mouth, and I think dinosaurs would have been similar to that. But good, good one there, Gabe. Okay, Stella has a couple. Stella has some questions. All right, what do you got, Stella? Was Megalodon the biggest predator in the sea, mm -hmm. and why did Megalodon disappear? Great questions. Was Megalodon the biggest predator in the sea? See, and why did Megalodon disappear? Two fantastic questions, Stella. For number one, in my opinion, I think Megalodon was probably the biggest and most fiercest meat-eating creature that ever lived on land or on ocean, in the ocean. It happened to be in the ocean. And the reason I say that is when you look at these teeth, when you look at these teeth from Megalodon, when you look at the size of its mouth, the massive amounts of food it could eat in one bite, the fact that it ate whales. I think it was probably the most ferocious and biggest meat-eating animal of all time. But if you think about it, there are things, for example, today, the largest animal to ever be discovered by science, as we've talked about before, is a blue whale, right? And blue whales, just like the whale shark and the basking shark, I told you, they're filter feeders. They eat the smallest things. They eat tiny little shrimp and plankton floating in the water. So technically, a blue whale is a meat eater, right? Because it's eating meat. It's eating tiny little shrimp. But it's not on the same par as something like a great white or megalodon that literally would attack something massive and tear it apart, bite off pieces to where all the blood would come out and it would die, and then it could go back and eat it. That's ferocious. That's frightening. So I think megalodon was probably the biggest. Some people say uh, mosasaurs were about the same size as megalodon, but remember, they lived about 50 million years apart. And a lot of people will make bets on who would have won in that fight. Personally, I think Megalodon would win because Megalodon had gills. Megalodon did not have to go to the surface to get a breath of air. Megalodon could stay underwater the whole time. Mosasaurid needs air, just like us. It would have to go up and take a breath of air. So I personally think Megalodon would beat a Mosasaur too. So I think Megalodon, my, in my opinion, is the most ferocious meat-eating animal to ever live on planet Earth. It just happens to be in the water and happens to be a shark. Now, why they disappeared Another great question, Stella, and that, that's one you really got to wonder about because how does an animal who's the top predator, arguably the most ferocious animal ever, how does it just disappear when it can eat whatever it wants to? Well, nature is a very fragile thing, right? Remember, we've talked about food and food chains, and if you remove the food from an animal, it's going to start having a really difficult problem, no matter how ferocious and how big it was. If its food starts to disappear, it's not gonna have enough to eat. And basically one of the arguments that science makes right now is that with Megalodon, remember I said Megalodon ate whales? It was so big it ate whales. Well, whales kinda one day went, why are we living in the, this warm water with not a lot of food and getting chased by Megalodon when we could go live in that really cold, cold water, we could get nice and fat and we'd have plenty of food and Megalodon won't be chasing us in cold, cold water because Megalodon doesn't like cold, cold water. And they think that's kind of what happened is Megalodon's food, the whales, tended to start to, they evolved into the colder water, the really cold, and they were able to get big and fat, have all that blubber to protect them against the cold. So they did great in cold water. Meanwhile, Megalodon's like, uh -uh, I'm, not good. I'm not a cold, I don't like cold water. Kind of like me, I don't like cold water. I don't want to go live in cold water. I'll make do in this warm water. It didn't make do. Its food source disappeared and eventually the largest and most ferocious, ferocious predator ever disappeared with everything else and whales are still here. So not all, you know, strength isn't always the top number one thing. Sometimes intelligence is and the whales got away with that one pretty good. So Stella, terrific questions. All right, next question. Uh, from Gabe. Gabe. Did Megalodon and Mosasaurs live at the same time together? Did Megalodon and Mosasaurs, well, I kind of just talked mind. about that. Yeah, they did. And they're 50 million years apart. That's one thing a lot of people, a lot of kids, and even adults, they think that because Megalodon was so big and so ferocious, that it had to have lived at the same time as big and ferocious dinosaurs, but it didn't. It lived way, way after. And even after the dinosaurs went extinct, after some of the biggest crocodiles that ever went extinct, like Sarcosuchus and Dinosuchus went extinct, there was giant crocodiles that lived only a few million years ago. 
There was giant sharks that lived a few million years ago, and there was giant sharks that lived during the dinosaur times. It just happens to be that Megalodon was the biggest and lived way after, and Dinosuchus and Sarcosuchus were the biggest crocs who lived during the dinosaur ages. So we've had gigantic animals all the way from the dinosaurs to present day at different times. Look at the, again, the example of the blue whale. They're here today and they're the biggest that ever lived. So good questions, Gabe. Sophie's got another question. Sophie's got another question. I have another question about if T-Rex could uh, occur into Megalodon's mouth. If he had a little bubble car, do you think he could drive that into Megalodon's A bubble mouth? car? Yeah. Yeah, bubble car for sure. But here's my one question back to you, Sophie. If T-Rex's arms are only this big, how does he steer the car? Um, he's, Wouldn't his nose he get the like a, steering wheel? He uses a grabber. Like, <laughs> he uses extensions to grab yeah. the wheel? Good he answer, uses, good like, answer. All right, we got anything grabber. out there? Any other questions? Is that it? I think you guys are awesome. I think those were some amazing questions. I think we pretty much covered it all. And as you guys know, you can always email me at fossilposse at gmail.com on our website, fossilposse.com. So if you guys have any more questions about sharks or anything we've been talking about for these last several or a couple of months, I should say, it's been so much fun being with you guys. So always email us. We have more shows coming up and we're here to chat about this stuff. So any questions you have, let me know. Otherwise, I'll plan on seeing you guys next Saturday. And I believe our expedition that day is the pterosaurs. We're gonna be talking about the flying pterosaurs and they were weird. Wait till you see some of this stuff. And I got a couple of cool fossils to show you about pterosaurs as well. So you guys have a great day, have a great Saturday and we'll see you next Saturday, all right? Bye.